Is what we saw from Dalvin Cook last year a sign of things to come? Or can he bounce back to be more of the guy we've seen in the previous seasons? There's also been a narrative surrounding Dalvin Cook this offseason. The addition of Kevin O'Connell as the head coach is going to allow Dalvin Cook to see a lot more targets than what he's seen over the last couple of seasons. We're here to dispel some of those rumors and talk about where you should be looking to take Dalvin Cook or even if you should take him at all. We're going to talk about all that and more right now. Let's ride. Welcome back in. Welcome back in. So let's just go ahead and get right into it, shall we? So Dalvin Cook, last year, only played in 13 games. Not surprising considering Dalvin Cook has never played a full season in his NFL career. The one thing that I would say that I would be a little a little concerned with is the shoulder injuries that he's continued to suffer. Each time he suffers a shoulder injury, it makes it more and more likely to, of a reoccurrence of this happening. And if it gets bad enough, it's going to require surgery. And if it does, we're talking about months not not weeks for him to miss. And so that is something you should definitely be uh, keeping in the uh, back of your mind. However, I am not a doctor, nor do I play one on TV. So I'm not going to talk any much more about that. But last year, he played 70% of the snaps, 80% of the opportunities, 19.2 carries per game, 3.8 targets per game, 47 red zone touches with 12 goal line carries last year, 1,200 rushing yards, six touchdowns, and 15.9 fantasy points per game, which was ninth. Now, the biggest reason is drop-off in production because, you know, in 2020, in 2020 and 2019, he averaged over 20 fantasy points per game. But last year, suffered a pretty significant drop-off in fantasy points. But that was mainly because of the touchdown rate. Last year, he only had a 2.1% touchdown rate. Compared, you compare that to the previous two seasons where he had over a 4% touchdown rate. And, and that pretty much explains most of his, of his drop-off. Now, he also saw less opportunities in terms of targets than what he typically sees as well. But he also had a drop in efficiency. He was 26th in yards per route run, which is not great. And then he also 39th in yards created per touch and 50th in yards after contact per attempt. So while we, we definitely seen a less effective Dalvin Cook last year, he was still productive. He had 100 yard he had 100 total yards in eight of his games last year and he also had five RB1 weeks, four RB2 weeks and four RB3 weeks. So for the most part he was a useful piece of fantasy football, but he just wasn't giving you those, those massive ceiling weeks that we typically see from him. He's also running behind a decent offensive line. I wouldn't say it's great and they did absolutely nothing to address it. 24th in adjusted line yards last year for this offensive line. Uh, they did add Ed Ingram in the second round of the 2022 draft, but overall this offensive line remains pretty much the same. Now the, you know, the big addition this offseason has been, you know, getting rid of Mike Zimmer, who is stuck in the 90s in the way that he handles football. Great defensive mind, no doubt, but somebody that should not be running an NFL franchise as, as a head coach. But Kevin O'Connell now comes over from the Rams system, has been the offensive coordinator there the last couple of years. And now this has happened, we've seen a big shift in people's mindset of how they think Dalvin Cook is going to be used. On, on one hand, I think there's some positives to what Kevin O'Connell is going to bring to this offense, but I think we should be pumping the brakes on some others. Start things off really quickly. We know that we know that the marquee of, of any Sean McVay offense is, is the use of 11 personnel. I mean, they use it pretty much more than any team in the league. And the good news is what we've seen from Dalvin Cook when he, when he has been put into 11 personnel is how much, how productive he's been. The biggest problem is though, you know, per Lord Reeves or Rich Rebar on Twitter. Shout out to him if you're not following him. You definitely should. Uh, one of the best fantasy minds out there. But since entering the league, Dalvin ranks 29th among running backs and carries out of 11 personnel. 27.5% of his career carries have come from 11. However, whenever he has been in 11 personnel, he has been absolutely fantastic. He ranks 7th in yards per carry uh, and 4th in expected points added per rush from 11 personnel over his career. Over the last three years, he ranks 5th, 7th, and 1st in EPA per rush from 11. The, the, the use of 11 personnel is definitely going to help Dalvin Cook, no doubt. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just a lot. I mean, pure logic. It, it's pretty simple to understand. Essentially, the more 11 personnel they're in, the, le the less the teams are going to be able to, to uh, stuff the box with, with, with defenders because you, you have those extra wide receivers out there on the field, which is going to cause uh, the use for more DBs and stuff like that. So it's just overall a net positive for Dalvin Cook. Now, the one, the one area that I'm going to push back on is, is going to be where I've heard a lot of people talk about how he's going to see so many more targets. Don't get me wrong. This offense is definitely going to throw the ball more than, than what we typically see from a, of a Mike Zimmer offense. Over the last couple of years that Kevin O'Connell has been the offensive coordinator, we've seen the Rams be top five first and, first and second down pass rate. Compare that to the Vikings who are in the bottom half of the league. So we're definitely going to see more passing opportunities, but I don't necessarily know that's going to go to Dalvin Cook. If, if you look at the Rams over, over the past five seasons, it just doesn't bear out that way. I mean, 2021, they were 32nd in target share to the running backs. They were 30th in 2020 
2020. They were 32nd in 2019, and 23rd was the best year. That was 2018. That was prime Todd Gurley year. That was the year that Todd Gurley went absolutely nuclear, and this Rams offense was one of the best, if not the best, in the league that year. And we, they still were only 23rd in, in, in terms of target share to the running backs. You compare that to the Vikings, who ranked 17th in 2021, 12th in 2020, 3rd in 2019, and 28th was the only year in 2018 where the Rams were actually outdid them. So I don't, I, I do not expect to all of a sudden Dalvin Cook is going to walk into some massive target share here. You know, and, and we're going to see some huge boom in sort of targets. I think it's fair to expect that he's probably still going to see 60 to 70 targets here in this offense, which is fine for him. He's not necessarily a guy that we, he's not Christian McCaffrey. That's not his game. He's not somebody that's going to get 100 plus targets, which is perfectly fine. He's going to likely see 17, 18 carries per game, probably right around four targets per game, which is perfectly fine for, for what he brings to the table, where I do think that he's going to see a boost and be able to get himself back up into the conversation of being a top five running back again is going to be the, how explosive this offense it likely will be and how much more it's going to throw the ball. And the use of 11 personnel has highlighted how good Dalvin Cook has been and when it placed at 11 personnel. I think those are the calling cards for him. I think we see a, a jump in terms of uh, you know how much he was able to convert a, inside the goal line last year. He only converted three of the 12 opportunities he had last year. You compare that to a career success rate of 43.9% success rate for inside the five-yard line prior to that. And I, I think it's pretty easy to see that he's in for some positive regression in terms of the touchdown department. So if he can get back to double-digit touchdowns, I do think Dalvin Cook can be a very viable option and could be somebody that pays off in terms of where he's going. I mean, Dalvin Cook is typically a guy the last couple of years has been a top three, top four pick, and now he's going at eighth overall or RB6. So I do. I you should be pumping the brakes a little bit on, on some on some of this that he's going to see this massive workload in terms of uh, in, in terms of being a pass catcher. I don't think much is going to change there, but I do think that he can revert back to the guy we saw before. Now, like I said, one of the scariest things with him has always been the, the injury concern because he's going to miss time. I mean, I do not expect at age twenty seven he's all of a sudden going to be able to stay healthy for the entire season. The question mark is how much is he going to miss? If it's only a couple of games, fine. It's not that big of a deal as long as it's not turning the fantasy playoff. That is where, you know, that I don't hate the idea of drafting Alexander Madison. Alexander Madison has been an absolute stud whenever given opportunities in this back in the wake of, of Dalvin Cook missing time. So with all that being said, I don't mind drafting Dalvin Cook at, at cost, but I'm not going to overdraft. There, there are some red flags here with this game. He is still 27 years old. He has missed a ton of time with injury. He has reoccurring shoulder problems. Those are all things that, that are going to be true, but I do think this offense is going to be better than what we've seen in terms of just being more explosive. They're going to throw the ball more, and so I think that's going to lead to more touchdown opportunity for Dalvin Cook, and I do think you're going to see them be more creative in the ways that they use Dalvin Cook as well. Let me know what you think about Dalvin Cook in the comment section below. I will see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.